Okay, and I think the problems I want to work here are really going to be the ones that have uh, things like word problems and stuff like that, which some people have trouble seeing how to convert the words into an actual problem to work. Okay, so here it says if a math tutor worked for 47 hours and was paid $15 for each hour they worked, how much money would they have made? Okay, well, we're going to take basically each hour we get $15 per hour. So if we work 47 of them, what we'd have to do is we'd have to take 47 times 15. Okay, and so now we just take 7 times 5 is 35. Carry the 3. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 is 23. Now remember, we'll have a dash there. And then we have 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 4 is 4. Now we'll add. Here we have 5 and nothing is 5. 7 and 3 is 10. Carry the 1. 4 and 3 is 7. And so it looks like they're going to make $705. Okay. So that's how much they're going to make for working 47 hours, getting paid $15 per hour. All right, what about the next one? It says, one boat to the island can carry five people. It must be a small boat. How many trips will the boat have to take in order to ferry 38 people to the island? Hint, round up your answer. And so we're going to get an answer that's not um, a whole number, basically. And so we're going to round it up to the number of trips because you can't take a part of a trip. And so we, we want a whole number of trips. And so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have to divide. Okay, So we have a total of 38 people, and we can get five people per per trip or per boat ride. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take 38 divided by 5, and that should give us the number of trips to do. So we're going to take 5, not 3. We're going to take 5 into 38. All right. So 5 goes into 3. No, 5 goes into 38. Yeah, that'll go 7 times. That'll give us 35. Now we'll subtract 8 minus 5. That's 3. Now here, this is kind of where we have to kind of strictly kind of move ahead to be able to do this problem. So now we know that we have a point here, a decimal, because that's where we have an n. And so now we're going to add some zeros out here because we don't know how many times we're going to do that. So now we have to bring down a zero. So 5 goes into 30. Well, that's 6. That'll give us 30. So we subtract that, we get 0. And so it's going to be 7.6 boat rides. But it said round up your answer. Well, 7.6, 6 is going to round that up. And so we're going to have 8 boat rides to get everybody ferried from wherever they're at to the island. Okay, And so that is going to be one that's an example where we don't really talk about it in, in the book as much, but you have to put that decimal there and then add some zeros, and that was going to be that. So that's why I kind of wanted to show you how this one is done, how to, why we have to round up, and how we get the numbers we got here. All right, so what about this one? It says, if streetlights are placed at most 145 feet apart, how many streetlights will be needed for a street that is four miles long, assuming there are lights at each end of the street? Note, one mile is 5,280 feet. All right, so what do we have? Well, <clears throat> first we have four miles, and we need to know how many feet four miles is. So we have to take our conversion here, 5,280 feet, times Four, because we have four miles. And so when we do that, that will give us the number of feet there are in the total of four miles. So four times zero is zero. Four times eight is 32, so we have a two, carry a three. Two times four is eight, plus three is 11. Four times five is 20, plus one is 21, okay? So that's how many, um, feet there are in those four miles. And now we have to think about, we have to split each one of those up in that. So we have to kind of divide here. And so we have to divide the total number, if that was four miles, we have to divide the total number 
by 145. So we're going to take 145 into 21120. Okay. So when we do that, we think, okay, how many times can 145 go into 2? Uh, it won't. How about 21? It won't. How about 20, 211? Well, that will go in. And if I take this times 2, that's going to be 200, or, or it's going to be, yeah, 290. So that's too big. So only we'll go one time. Well, here it looks like we're going to have to borrow. So let's go ahead. We'll borrow clear from here, make that 11. But we're going to have to borrow from here, make it 10. Now we can do our subtraction. So 11 minus 5 is going to give me 6. 10 minus 4 is going to give me 6. 1 minus 1 is 0. So now I can bring, bring down my 2. All right, so 145 times what will give me 662? Well, if I take it times 5, uh, what do we get? Let's see, that's going to give me 25. That'll give me 22. That'll give me 725. So that's too big. So this is an example where I, you know, I took 5 times 1 and got 5. So I, eh, maybe, but it doesn't work. So now we take 145 times 4. 4 times 5 is 20. That's 16, 17, 18. That's a 5. And so we know that's going to be a 4. So we have 5, 8, 0. Again, subtract. All right, so um, here I can subtract it, but this one I can't. So I'm going to go ahead and do my borrowing now, so then I can just do all my subtraction to, at one time. 2 minus 0 is 2. 8 from 16 is 8, and I can bring down my next 0. All right, so 145 goes into 820 how many times? Well, 725 was going to be with 5. Let's see, if we add another 145 to that, which would be a times 6, what do we get? Well, that's 10, that's 4, 5, 6, 7, that's an 8. Well, that's too big, so that means this has to be a 5. And so that's 725, subtract. All right, so now we again borrow, that's a 7, that becomes 12, but now we borrow again. And now we have what? We have 10 minus 5 is a 5. 11 minus 2 is going to be a 9. And guess what? We have to put in a decimal, add a 0, and bring it all the way down here again. All right, so now what do we have to multiply by? Um, well, let's see. 870 was times 6. So if we add another 145, that's going to be too big, so that's going to be a 6. And so it's 870, subtract. So we have to borrow again, and now we're running out of room here. Should have made more. Uh, so it's an 8, so we have, that looks like 80. So that's a 0, that's an 8. And so now at this point, we're like, okay, well, we're going to have to round up, okay? Because we need to have one one here because it's going to go past here. And so 145.6 goes to 146. And so that's going to be our answer. And what is it we need to have? Uh, we need 146 street lights. Okay, so that would be the whole thing with the units because we need units here. All right. So that one was a lot more work because, you know, first we had to multiply over here to get the number of um, mile, feet in, in four miles. Then we had to do a lot more uh, multiplication testing it. And then we did a trick here. We added 145 more instead of multiplying by six. So that was easier. And then we had a lot of, you know, subtraction here. What about the next one? It says new iceberg. So there's a new iceberg. It shaved off a glacier after a collision with another iceberg. It measures 48 miles long and 28 miles wide. What's the approximate area of the new iceberg? Well, it looks like it's going to be some kind of a rectangle. And it's going to be 48 miles long and 28 miles wide. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're going to take 48 times uh, 28. 
So 8 times 8 is 64. 4 times 8 is 32, plus that's going to be uh, 38. Now we don't put a nothing here. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Now we add. That's a 4. That's a 14. And that's 13. And so it's going to be approximately 1344. And remember, it's miles squared. Okay, because we have to have miles times a mile, which is miles squared. And they said it's about this and about this. So I'm saying, well, it's approximately, so it squiggly equals 1344 square miles. All right, so that's all I have for this section.